Oh, it's good. Okay. Thursday. Okay, so that, that will affect that. And then lastly, 
in the application for the zone change, and I guess we'll start with the zone change now, there was a statement that was made that we had met with the city council office and the neighborhood council. We didn't meet, we did not meet with the neighborhood council prior to submitting anything to the city. What we, the people we met with were informal neighborhood leaders, people from some of the independent communities that make up your overall group. So we talked to the planning department and we will be correcting that statement because we do, we do not want anybody in the city to be led to believe that we have had any formal meetings or formal approvals from the neighborhood council because frankly the project isn't there yet. So that will be, when we amend the application and we amend the map, we will also amend that. So that being said, we'll talk about the zone change first. Right now this lot is zoned as an R1 lot, which means that it has the right to be subdivided and developed into single family homes. R1 single family homes require 50 feet of frontage and 5,000 square feet per home built. To do that on this lot would require a massive amount of grading in order to make any development feasible. The reason we requested the zone change is because we could get the same number of lots that we would be able to get under an R1, but we could cluster the homes in such a manner that we could be more sensitive to the environment, do far less grading than we would have to do with a single family home development, and yet still maintain a single family home environment. We also were able to then create open spaces around these developments, and that was all, that was per my conversations personally with Jose Rivera Navarro, who is, who was the acting DA at the time. His, his overriding concern about these small lot subdivisions is that when they start getting large number of homes, that they forget about the open space, and he's, he's requiring more open space when you start getting above 10 units. So we try, we also wanted to be sensitive to that. So that, that is why, that's why the zone change is being requested. Mostly, like I said, for sensitivity reasons. Also, it allows the architecture, we have a rendering over here that kind of shows the, the, the concept of what, what you'll see. The houses will blend with the terrain and topography, and we will plant open spaces so, so that it can be, the, the, the visuals are, are aesthetic, more aesthetically pleasing. So, that being said, I, I, I think that that's pretty much the project in a nutshell. We are going to be meeting, like I said, with the city council today to review the density and the environmental, and then we will also be meeting, we have a future meeting set up with the city's design studio to review the architecture before we finalize that. So this time the architecture, this is conceptual, it's not, it's not really final, but the other thing that they did do, because of the uniqueness of the topography and the terrain, is these homes, they're not going to be, they're also not going to be your cookie cutter, R1, you know, home where, you know, you have three homes and it's one, two, three, one, two, three, and they keep repeating. They're, they're almost custom. For 36 lots, we have 20 different floor plans. So each lot is developed to be pretty much unique to its own terrain and topography. Again, in order to maintain those aesthetically pleasing sidelines for, for the residents. So, I think that's pretty, that's pretty much the project. Questions? Okay, is that your entire presentation? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Dave Silver, and I'm here on this project. I think there's some concerns also about non-perfect movies on this project, that it would be a huge range operation. The project, if we were doing this as a regular, what we're about to do this project, we normally expect 1,000 to 10,000 yards of jet fuel per lot. So 36 lots, you'd expect 36,000 yards of fuel. Everybody knows how many yards of dirt. Everybody understand what I say when I say yards of dirt? 
So you expect at a minimum of 36,000 yards of dirt to be moved on projects this size. That's a minimum. This is a very steep hillside. I would expect probably 23,000 yards of block. They probably were allowed to do that. Um, so we basically parked it over here together. We did a small lot subdivision. And everything now is 15,000 yards total, giving us you know, less than 1,000 yards of block. So very, even though it may seem like a lot of dirt, it may seem like a lot of work to build this thing, it's actually uh, limited to the Sure, we were actually doing on this job, considering our ability and running this train. I think the other concern was about traffic flow in this project. Uh, we pretty much um, tried to design it so that there's no focal cover, no air, all 36 units are going out in one spot. You know, we finished, we completed this road up here, Forest Park, um, which people I understand actually use now, even though it's a dirt road. <coughs> Um, so these people have the access across Forest Park, these people have access out on Onyx, uh, these people have access over, you know, through Long, the other Onyx drive, and Barrel. And there's actually four exit points, and I don't know if all of them have traffic signals, but once you get down to the main road, there's actually four points where you can come in and go out on the project. So we're trying to make sure that it's not a huge impact on the community. And I think that's about all I want to add to that. Oh, I'm sorry, did that, yes. well, what he brought up, like, one, more, one more note that I forgot to mention. In, in my conversation with planning last week on the, on the traffic specifically, um, they had not anticipated the traffic setting. Their, they, their conversation with the DOT indicated that peak flow traffic for a 39-unit 30, development did not create significant impact where if we were not having the EIR, they would ask us to do an independent traffic study. So, um, that, I mean, I just wanted to comment on that, but with the EIR at the end, they may ask us to do traffic study anyways. So, it would have been a little more interesting. Okay, so yes. Yes. Okay. So, that's the conclusion of our presentation. At this time, we're going to take a question and answer. Um, can I see a raise of hand? How many people have questions? We're going to start this way, and we're just going to go down the line then. Um, so when I call, when I ask you for your question, if you'll just state your question, and if, you, if it's multiple part, please state all the questions at one time, and then we'll give you, depending on the, the question, maybe two or four minutes to answer, depending on how, how many parts there are to the question. Okay. So in this first row, do you start that question? Go ahead. Did you say it was four points out, right? Did you say it was four points out, right? Well, four things. I think it's a Well, and here's another one. 
these are two separate exits. For the small, 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 small,
front wall, the development comes up, I'm going to I'll take this consideration before I buy my house. And you couldn't have thought about this, because you know the development is gone. I would like to point uh, a few very comments in my life. I don't really want to keep a little bit somewhere else, but if, if I would have to force to believe, I will. So they're only saying, you're only expecting the whole project, you know, during rush hour 26 uh, 20 to 25 minutes of car. That's all rush hour, all day long. So it's going to, for an hour basis, you're going to be one or two more cars.
park on one side, and they, this developer or whatever it's called, has come and they have parked all their wood, six truckloads of lumber that's like from here to there, in the street. Uh, they come on a Friday, they leave it there for like two weeks, and so we only have half the street where we can park our car. And then the workers come and park their cars behind all of these. They have brought the cement trucks up there, 7.30 in the morning, sometimes 6.30 in the morning, you know, and then they say, oh, and then not only that, but they were supposed to, when you build a new house, you're supposed to know by people around you, right? We never got any notifications. So how did that happen? You know, is this house related to the project at all? No. Okay. But it's the same company as the other construction comes or whether or not they're following the guidelines for construction, you need to you need to I follow the guidelines of the safety. You get it. And, and, and they don't have the staff to come out here and tell them you can't do this and that. Okay. We call that out the hard way. We made it. And barrel is okay, barrel is only 20 feet wide, right? So we have to they finish with 10 houses right to here, right? Right now we can only go forward one way or back out. When the trash trucks come up, they have to turn the milk sharp turn off of moonstone. When the fire truck comes up, they can't even go up there. They have to go up there and back up. And there's a fire. They don't know nothing about the fire dangers in that area. It's really bad when we get those high winds and those tails up there. Okay, now for how is how is the um <laughs> the jump, the jump, the, the trash trucks they come up, they have to park down here. The postman has to park down here to bring up our mail. They have to walk all the way up here and get our trash trucks, trash bins. Okay, and take them all the way back there. The cement trucks come up here, they park in front of our neighbor's house, and then they start cleaning their damn trucks in front of her bedroom window. Like there, there's a trash truck, and they have all this crap in the street. Uh, and then they didn't have the, the workers were supposed to have uh, water. They didn't get water for the three months. They're supposed to have a toilet. They didn't get a toilet for almost a month. So what were they going? Okay? They didn't have uh, electricity and the building a safety set. They're supposed to have electricity and they don't they're supposed to shut down. And they cannot send somebody out because they don't understand. So they finally got electricity after three months, okay? Because somebody really complained about it. And as far as Forest Park, okay, Forest Park, if you go down to the road there, you have to go right here to get it done. Okay, that's not really a good street because the firemen have almost gone off that cliff. You think that street is wide through that little garage? It's only this wide, the rest is just landfill. And the fire trucks know that. Now, because he almost went off the edge. And all of you speak, where are all these trucks with all this dirt going to go? They can't even turn right now. They're going to stop. Where's, where's all that dirt going to go? I mean, they're going to be blocking our roads day and night. So, ma'am, do you have a, a question for them? I understand your concerns and I have no idea. So, I have a question that you'd like to answer. I know you got yeah, why 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 do they do an environment, environmental impact right away? I believe mean, what is it is now being replaced by the city. Yeah, after all the 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 environmental the environmental application is filed as part of the overall application. There there's there's you file your application, you file for any any zone changes, variances, uh, zone administrative adjustments, subdivider statement, environment environmental assessment form, and then what happens is that the planning department makes distributions. They, the first thing that they will do is they will take that environmental assessment form and they do what they call an initial study. And then based upon the results of the initial study, then they will determine what type of environmental document is required. So right now, they, they can't know what kind of environmental document would be required until the application is submitted, until they see the scope of the project. 
uh, again, like I said, the article is going to be meeting on Thursday to discuss the scope of that environmental document because they do believe that a full that an EIR may be necessary. Did that sound like No, this is, this is a meeting between the developer, wait, 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 I, I'm going, between us and the planning department. When the EIR is done, yes, that will be public. That, 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 will, that will definitely be public. Any studies that are done will be, will, will be public. Um, whether or not there will be any IIR. Based on the email that I, that I got today, it said that when, when I meet with him on Thursday, they will discuss an independent EIR mitigating negative declaration document for this project. <coughs> Thank you. 